So the woman obtains her diagnostic mammogram, and once it's evaluated by the radiologist, it is done in real time. Now, abnormal findings could be, as I stated, calcium deposits or masses or areas of architectural distortion. Special views are done depending on what is seen. If it's microclassifications, we do magnification views because microclassifications have to be um, assessed as to whether they have a certain distribution or morphological appearance that makes them suspicious for us to tell the woman or inform her that she will need a biopsy. And I'll get to the type of procedure that's done for those classifications. Now, if she has a mass or architectural distortion, we do spot compression views and we see if that area persists. If the area persists, then we take her to an ultrasound. An ultrasound is done looking at either the whole breast or a particular quadrant of the breast where the radiologist sees the abnormality. That abnormality is evaluated to see if it's a fluid-filled mass, like a cyst, or a solid mass. If it's a fluid-filled mass and it's a simple cyst, we usually do not follow them. If there's debris or septations, we call them complicated cysts, and we do a short follow-up, six months, on those areas. If it's a solid mass, then we assess whether the mass is well circumscribed, because then it could be something benign, like a fibroadenoma. And if it matches the appropriate age for that woman, if she's a young female, we will do follow-up. But if it's an older woman, postmenopausal, in her 60s or 70s, even if the mass is well circumscribed, we may choose to biopsy it because that lesion is not necessarily appropriate for that woman. If, however, we see architectural distortion, a speculated mass, those go on for a biopsy. And those masses, any solid mass is seen in the breast, those masses require us to evaluate the axilla because we have to assess whether the lymph nodes are positive or negative and whether they'll require a biopsy along with the indeterminate finding within the breast.